after extensive research and a survey i have gathered everything that you need to know as an international medical student to plan your usmle timeline there are a lot of milestones i like to divide them as the big shots versus the underdogs there are great videos on youtube about the big shots as in the step 1 exam the step 2 ck oet match season interviews etc and we all know a little about them but then comes the underdogs which are extremely underrated especially by IMGs we don't even incorporate them into our timeline until we get to the point that we have to do them and then they seem like huge roadblocks so in this video i'm going to tell about all of these milestones based on a survey which was taken up by medical students residents about their timeline and i'm going to help you tailor your specific usmle timeline irrespective if you're a medical student or an intern or a graduate so starting the video in 3 2 all right so i'm going to ask you a question what do you think is the first step in your usmle timeline if you're saying the usmle step 1 exam i'm going to stop you right there it's not the step 1 exam it is in fact you planning your timeline that needs to be the first step and how you can do that is first decide when you want to match with season as in the 2023 math season or the 2024 math season and then work your way backwards put your milestones in the timeline and allocate time accordingly the next milestone is going to be the usmle step 1 exam which is going pass and fail uh, from 2022 january to 26 um so for this exam i through my survey most people took about 6 months 6 to 9 months to prepare for the exam but with the exam going pass and fail i think um you can finish it in 3 to 4 months um if you have a lot of dedicated period for it apart from that you need to apply for the exam Now this is done through the ECFMG website and application of the exam can take up to 1 to 3 months because you need to get those dates and um the process your status verification needs to be done you need to send in your documents and they need to be verified etc so the whole process might take you about 4 to 5 months so plan ahead and even after giving the usmle step 1 exam you do not get your score report immediately it takes about 2 to 3 weeks and if you need your score report at a certain date then do plan your exam accordingly the next milestone is is the underdog it's extremely underrated by a lot of medical students and it comes as a surprise to most of them and this is the toefl exam or the english proficiency exam it's pretty simple now and this is needed not per se for the match application but most of the clerkships in the us the U university based clerkships require you to send a toefl score report especially if you are not from us or caribbean schools the preparation time i would say is 2 weeks if you're just doing something every day and it's a one day exam the score report can take up till a month to come especially due to covid and to apply for the exam i would say keep one or two months prior because due to covid the seats and um, the test centers are very limited so it's better that you plan ahead and get the day that you want okay, after this there are two big shots this is the usmle step 2 ck exam which can uh, according to my survey again let me see most people said that they took 4 to 6 months to prepare for this exam and this is understandable because i feel 80% of the knowledge from your step 1 is repeated in your step 2 exam so if you already have a good base then this exam might not take as much time and uh, to get the score reports again it takes around 2 weeks Uh, the application process is similar to the step 1 exam so on the whole the exam this timeline is going to take you 4 to 6 months so the next milestone is again a big shot which is uh, pretty new that is the english occupancy test or the oet this is uh, the new usmle step 2 cs exam which has been completely cancelled 
for now and this OET exam the preparation time is around one month as voted in my survey by the people who took it and the application of process is also pretty simple but due to covid again getting the test centers and dates can be difficult so try to plan it well in advance and apply at least i would say one to two months prior then you want to take the exam all right i'm just going to check the next milestone this is one of my favorite this is an underdog as i would like to say an extremely extremely underrated uh, milestone and this is the visa a lot of us don't have the visa uh, until we actually plan to start a US assembly journey and i know people who got clerkships in the us but got stuck in india or anywhere in their home country because they didn't have a visa the visa to travel to the us for clerkships is the tourist visa which is the b1 b2 visa and for this you need to first apply for an appointment which can take up till three to six months because again covid and after the appointment and the interview it can take anywhere between three to five weeks for your visa to come so do plan this much in advance because you don't want to get stuck even though you have a clerkship in hand next one is extremely important for imgs and it was a stress point for me and that is the immunization to come to your clerkships which is a big shot you need these underdogs to supplement it and immunizations is one of them we need a hepatitis b immunization the mmr vaccine a tb test or a ppd and a interferon gamma test and a varicella vaccine and if you're coming during the flu months that is october to march then you also need proof of flu shot and with covid here you also need a proof of covid vaccination and an rt pcr if you're not previously immunized you would have to take them and there are two or three doses one to three months um, apart so that would take a lot of time if you're already immunized you still have to get the immunization titers which can take up up to three to four weeks depending on the lab do plan immunizations well in advance and i would like to emphasize that to apply to your clerkships the documents that you send one of them is immunization so until you have a completely immunized immunized card you cannot apply to clerkships and keep in mind that the big shots that is clerkships which is the next milestone in my list you need to apply to them six to nine months prior let me give you some specific examples university of north carolina unc is an amazing university and it is very uh, medical student friendly for clerkships and they prefer students to apply six to nine months prior due to covid they are making some exceptions where you can apply four to six months prior then coming to the yale university which is open right now and accepting international medical students they want you to apply 120 days prior to the start of your clerkship that is four months prior to the start of your clerkship like i don't know if you are able to uh, imagine how this timeline is going to be imagine that you're in january 2022 and you want to go to clerkships in october or the next year jan you need like these six months to get your documents your visa your immunization and then six months later you're going to apply for a clerkship that is starting next year jan so i hope you're getting why planning your timeline and knowing how long each milestone is going to take and not missing out on any milestone is really important move on to the next milestone is the clerkships as i told you need to apply six months prior at least and there are a lot of documents one of them being immunization the others are quite doable and i will be doing a video just dedicated to clerkships and the documents that you need to prepare and how you can prepare so stay tuned for that and subscribe to my channel so that you know when i put up that video all right so the next milestone is an underdog again and unfortunately it's not told anywhere on the internet like people just don't share about it they don't talk about it and this milestone is the stay and the travel when you're coming to clerkships so in the u.s um, getting accommodation in places like new york and the bustling cities can be quite tough especially if you're coming during the peak season when all medical students are coming to do their clerkships 
so you need to plan your stay and travel well in advance i would say at least four months three to four months prior to find your stay and also to get your tickets because there's covid and you don't know what's going to happen moving to another big shot which is the research experience research can take anywhere up to six to six months to one year but as a student there are some short-term research programs or uh, scholarship programs where you can finish the research within four to six months and one of them is the icmr project in india where as a student you select a guide and then you come up with a topic and then you do your research you submit results and if they get accepted you get a stipend for those two months that you worked and you can also publish it but it's okay if you have done zero research as a medical student even during your internship or as a graduate you can go to hospitals or doctors and request them if you could join in their work also there are um, research electives here in the US which are at least six months long I am I'm, I'm sure there are also remote researches where you can just stay in your home country and do online research work and those are pretty good if you uh, want to boost up your CV so do keep uh, at least four to six months for research activities along with something else that is going on so another milestone which also falls in the big shot category because a lot of us know about it is the volunteer experiences and your hobbies so these can be started even from the first year of medical school and they include not only the medical volunteer experiences that is going to camps or exhibitions for other people and awareness programs but also non-medical uh, volunteer experiences which can be anything for example in india you have we have youth for seva you can join as a medico uh, one good experience that i have had is with the road Tract club they have yearly applications for members and it is just amazing they have so many activities awareness programs health camp programs and it's just a network of all P, uh, students all over the world so it's amazing if you want to check it out and i also like to add hobbies which may be an underdog i would say because a lot of people don't pay attention to it but i think it's really important because in your cv you do put a, a, a section of the extracurriculars that you're going to do and in your interviews um, the ice breaking session can be all about your hobbies so that's a great way of um, talking to other people and connecting to, to them so do invest time in hobbies and just don't keep studying or doing research so the next milestone is a major underdog one of my most favorite because no international medical student pays attention to it until and unless they actually come for clerkships and then they see so many people doing it and that is networking i cannot emphasize how important networking can be networking is basically connecting to a lot of people it can be your friends in medical school it can be your seniors it can be residents and fellow where you're doing your clerkships it can be attendings and of course you should really be respectful of your network and respect their time and space but it's always good to ask people you will be amazed by how much information other people have and how willing they are to actually reach out and help so please do network even from medical school and just be respectful of your network so the next milestone is again in the underdog category and this is like the scariest thing for any img i feel because we are not trained to do something like this writing your documents which is the cv or your resume the sop the statement of purpose or a personal statement and then we have lors that is letter of recommendations and the mspe that is medical school performance evaluation let me break down what each of them means the CV, the resume is basically a very formal document of all your achievements, what all you do in a perfect format for someone to just glance and see who you are as a professional. The statement of purpose is basically a heart to heart talk with someone else. You're literally telling them that, oh my God, I love this field. 
this is why i love it and this is why i love your program and i would just be so happy to be a part of it so it's again by the name goes it's a very personal document these two milestones can actually be needed by medical students much much before the match application because you need them for clerkships unc yale sinai all the places that are open right now and may open that is cleveland clinic or mayo they all need you to send your cv as well as an sop if you go back in your timeline you need to be ready with these at least 6 to 7 months prior to your clerkship start date because you need it for the application if you're for the first time writing a cv and sop it will take you about 2 to 3 weeks to even research and talk to people and get them to send you their documents to you know know what to write and then i think for me it took 2 weeks with um writing my first draft to the fourth draft which was my final draft having it corrected correcting it myself etc so i would say please do give it a solid one month of course you can do other things uh, alongside writing these documents but do give it one month at least because you need to think and write it all down you will again need the cv and sop around july um july would be a good time to start writing it again for your residency these are the documents these are the words which are going to reach program directors even before they select you for an interview like these documents are going to get you in the interviews so go, keep give it a good thought next one is lors these are letter of recommendations preferably you should have at least 3 or 4 letter of recommendations and preferably from a us based physician because well they know the system so they know what are your qualities which will be appreciated in a residency program of course you can get from your home country but it's not advisable getting lors can be pretty tough because these physicians are super busy and you have to keep contacting them and emailing them and saying that you know hey i'm going to be applying for this math season so please do send in the lor so keep that in mind you need to be able to finish your clerkships and give enough time to the physician to write and send an lor for you the next document was the mspe now this is needed again somewhere in july to august where you are preparing your application and this is sent in by your medical school it is your scores your conduct and what extracurricular activities that you were a part of so it is like a recap of your entire medical school so make sure you make a good impression and again getting a document from a college or a medical school can be a tedious process so do give in give them a month or so inform them tell them what they need to write so that it can come in time for your application moving on to the next documentation which is the ECFMG certification when i started applying for my exams this was so confusing i didn't know what application to an exam meant what ECFMG certification meant and it was all just very confusing let me break it down for you you apply through ecfmg or their online web portal oss etc for the usmd step 1 step 2 oet exam as well as ecfmg certification but the certification needs it's like a license to work in the us it's a license to say that a us uh, medical school graduate your degree is equivalent to them they don't understand what mbbs is so you have to finish the usmd step 1 exam and have a score report of pass the step 2 ck exam have a score report oet exam have a score report as well as your medical school diploma which is uh, basically the degree that you get after finishing your medical school and graduating so this can obviously be done only after your graduation and after graduation you may not be able to get your degree immediately because most of IMGs extend our graduation dates and the whole process gets messy so do give it a good 2 to 3 months to collect all these documents after submitting an application for the ECFMG certification it can take up till 1 uh, to 2 weeks to get uh, i don't know if things would change with the covid scenario but yeah on their website they have told that it takes about 2 to 1 to 2 weeks so the next um milestone is an underdog 
and again this is a very heartfelt video to any student because i know the struggle i've been through it and i wish someone guided me better and this is planning your expenses what i mean by that is usmd can be a very expensive process um the cost is crazy you need to pay for your exams the application you need to pay for the material and you need to pay for a tuition fee and application fee for clerkships you need to pay for stay and travel and after that comes your application for the match the residency match you need to pay to for every application that you send in and then you need to pay for your travel during your interviews and your stay during your interviews if they become in person and even if they are virtual you need to pay and buy your setup so overall you need to plan that okay i need this much amount for my usmd process so i would just suggest that you know you know from where that fund is going to come keep a fund separately for your usmd it's an investment so make sure that you have it figured out and you have it in mind so that it will avoid stress towards the end okay the next one is era's application so now the milestones start streamlining irrespective from where you started you start all merging at this point which is mid june so in mid june according to the website you can buy an era's token which is a token to start opening your application and submitting documents and you can submit documents up till september the dates can change every year on uh, this year the date was i mean the last year september the date was september 2000 uh, 29 2021 and that day the application portal closes until then you can submit documents it's better to start planning your application and putting in the documents from july onwards but you can still of course wait till september in the eras application um you will have to submit your cv sop letter of recommendations and your ecfmd certification uh, the personal statement can actually be different for each program you can submit different lors for each program but the cv remains the same so you know you just don't have to write one sop it can if it's your top choice if you have like five to six top top choices and you like really want to personalize that letter then you'll have to write five to six statement of purposes and you can submit different lors so this whole process can take a lot of time all right so this uh, application process starts from july august september and during the same time you need to start researching programs and this can be extremely tedious because well if you are in your home country you do know which university is good which will fit you better how's the weather in a certain place but it's very different here in the us because you don't know you don't know how the weather is how the place is if you will like staying there how the program is if you will be a best fit for it there are a lot of research um search engines for these programs uh one of them being residency explorer the other one being freda and they have information about each university in detail like what are the hours of work how much they're going to pay you if it's j1 visa or h1b visa and a lot of information that you will need to make an informed decision so start you need to start researching the programs i think in august to september so the next milestone is going to be a big shot um a lot of us know about it which is the usmle step 3 exam it's a two day exam and the application process is quite similar to the step 1 and step 2 but this is the exam that you need to take in the us so you need to plan your travel and um the exam accordingly this exam is not needed to be ecfmg certified but you do need it if you are planning to get the h1b visa if you want to get that visa then you need to have step 3 score report before um, the rank order list after september october to feb we have interviews and this is when programs review your application and they invite you for interviews if they are in person then you will have to plan your travel well in advance and you will have to find a base in the us like one city 
or one place that you would like to live in and then you can start traveling to wherever you get an interview at, um, invite but if they are virtual then again this needs some more planning and it can take anywhere between three to four weeks to get your setup um, you will have to have a good camera or a webcam you'll have to have a mic a good light system a good setting and trust me it can it can just take a lot from someone who is not used to it so keep some time off just to do your setup by feb you should be done with your interviews and in march um, it's usually the third uh, friday of the month of march when which is called as the match day and that's when you get the results of whether you matched or not after that the residency starts on first june so you have about April, May, two months f to get your visa and come to the US and move in for your residency. Yeah, overall, these are all the milestones in the USMLE timeline, which according to me uh, are extremely important. And some of them are well explained over the internet, while some of them are not even mentioned. So I hope that these milestones will and the time that I have given and allocated to each of them will really help you plan your timeline well and in the next part of the video i will exactly be explaining what i did and when i did from basically the first year of mbbs and how i'm going to plan further i'm also going to be sharing some timelines from other people that i have spoken to and i'll be sharing their templates so yeah if you think that this video has added value to you and your life and your USMA process then please do consider subscribing to my channel because it's really going to help me invest into it i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you soon bye